Hello, my name is Pascal Casson. I'm an emergency physician in Paris and head of the Global First Aid Reference Center of the International uh, Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent. We are talking today uh, about the guidelines 2020 uh, and guidelines about uh, first aid and resuscitation. First, uh, I have no conflict of interest in this field, uh, no, no, no problem, no financial one and no, no, no technical one. First of all, uh, the beginning, can, I can say that uh, we have no revolution anywhere in these uh, new guidelines. Effectively, we have some change from uh, 2015, but uh, no revolution. Uh, the, the American Heart Association, the European Association Council published the, the, these, the, these guidelines. And uh, we have, of course, uh, we have uh, some evolution, uh, but uh, not a lot in the field of first aid and in the field of, res of the, uh, the cardiopulmonary resuscitation. But before, before the beginning of this, uh, uh, of the final step of the, of the guidelines, we had, we had an unexpected guest. Of course, is the COVID virus. And of course, with that, we had to change and to give some recommendation because uh, the, the environment change, changes and we, we must take some, something into account. And first of all, the, the first question was, can I still perform first aid during the COVID period? The response, the, the, response, the, the answer was, was yes. Yes, we have to, to continue to provide and promote first aid because the community and person needs that. Of course, we have to, to give first aid and we have to teach first aid. But, but we have to, to, to take some, some, some precaution. Is uh, first wash hands first before and after uh, the first aid procedures. Of course, to respect uh, social distancing as much as possible. Especially where, of course, we are we are giving uh, we are giving first aid, but also when we are teaching first aid, and uh, when we are, especially when we we are we are advanced first aider, we have to use personal protective equipment. Of course, the lay pe the lay people has not this personal protective equipment eh, eh, except the mask. Uh, the the professional and the volunteers. I have this personal protective equipment and it's very important. And of course, during this period, we have to focus on the prevention. Today, of course, is the vaccination, but at the beginning of the crisis, of the COVID crisis, it was just, of course, this, the, this social distancing. First, we, we are talking about first aid, the, the first aid guidelines, the new one, the differences between, between 2015 and 2020. Of course, we, we have just some, some topics. Not all the topics are, have been, uh, have been uh, revealed, revised, but some of them, it's very interesting to see the difference. First of all, we, we, can, we can begin by the last three things situation. And first of all, the hemorrhage. Bleeding, of course, is very dangerous. And uh, for the control of severe, severe life-threatening bleeding, we have to to, uh, to uh, apply direct manual pressure, as we have done by the past, with a clean, sterile dressing, and uh, it's, with that, we control this severe breathing. Of course, uh, we, we can also consider to use hemostatic dressing. Hemostatic dressing can be used when we are able to apply direct manual pressure. And last and not least, especially during, uh, during crisis situation, terrorism attack or, or disaster. Of course, if a, 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 an hemorrhage occurs, we can use tourniquet. By the past, we said no tourniquet, but today we know that if we have more than one wound in a, in, in a, in a victim or many victims, it's very important to use this tourniquet. We win time. And of course, we can use this tourniquet in a location amenable uh, to the application of the of the tourniquet uh, as the arms or the legs. Second one is of course the another situation, the recovery position. Recovery position. Oh, uh, of course we we can put in recovery position the casualty if 
and she she or he is not uh, is not responsive and uh, he, he not is not able to 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 respond and to make a, a simple gesture sometimes it's, uh, it's necessary to to say that it's necessary to do that if we have a medical illness or a non physical trauma if we have a physical trauma we have to 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 discuss with the emergency medical system to see if it's really necessary to put the victim in recovery position. Does not meet the criteria for the initiation of rescue breathing or chest compression. That's the problem. Because effectively, sometimes, if if we put on in recovery position, the the the, the to, to 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 have the diagnosis of cardiac arrest is very, very difficult. And that's the, the problem of the recovery position. We have to think about probably for 2025, it will be another, uh, another possibility of evolution of the indication of the recovery position and the use of this position. Now we, we can talk about recognition of stroke. Stroke is an emergency. An emergency now, today, and that's possible to do something when we have a stroke. Now we have, we have treatment of stroke and if we are making this treatment very quickly, uh, perhaps we can save many, many cerebral cells. And that's very important. For that, we have to win time. We have to, to make the diagnosis very quickly. And for that, it's the lay people who has to do. And it's very clear for that, it's necessary to use, to help the first aider, to use some, some scales. The scales are very well new, and we have the first one, the FAST. The FAST is the, 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 the scale most used all around the world, is of course the evaluation of the fascial, arm, speech, and time. After we have other, other scales, and especially, especially some scales who, who augment, augment the, the, the capacity and the sensitivity of the, uh, of the recognition of stroke, because because they use a blood glucose measurement, because effectively some hypoglycemia are able to 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 be like an an a, 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 a stroke, and that's that's really a problem. It's important to measure the blood glucose level, and uh, for that we can use other scales, the LAPS and the MASS. That's for uh, advanced life support of course, volunteers or professionals who can use the measurement of blood glucose. Next, next emergency is the anaphylaxis. The anaphylaxis can, can occur uh, when, uh, when you take a medication and we have a big, you have a big allergy, but also, of course, where if you eat something and you have an allergy or if you are in contact with a product. And for that, we, we have to use very quickly very quickly, uh, a medication is the adrenaline. Adrenaline is uh, is the, the name used in France, but uh, uh, effectively, we 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 have to use this uh, the, the this sort of uh, of uh, first aid injection because we have to 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 be very quick in the response to this allergic reaction. First, we have to use the pen of the victim. If the pen uh, the, the victim of the pain is because she has, by the past, she has uh, she had an, an accident, perhaps an anaphylaxis one, and you can use her or his pain. And also, you must deliver a second dose of, of intramuscular adrenaline by auto-injector if the first one is not efficient. That's very important because it can send life until the EMS arrives. After we, we can talk about thermal burns. Of course, we, we have to cool the thermal burns. It's not new. Since a long time, we know that we, we must, we must do that. But the time is just a little changing. First, we have to remove from the head its source because, of course, we have to stop. We have to stop the, the thermal effect. And after, immediately, immediately, we, we have to start the cooling. And uh, with a cool or a cold water. After uh, this cooling must uh, continue during at least twenty minutes. Even we, we can uh, we can think about hypothermia, 
some specialists of, of Burns are afraid of that. It's very clear that in emergency, if we want to be efficient, we have to cool for 20 minutes. Of course, we can loosely cover the burn with a dry, sterile dressing, or if we have not, a clean wrap. And with that, it normally it will be better and we have um, less handicap after a burn. We have, now, uh, we have now to talk about trauma, and especially cervical spine motion, and motion restriction and stabilization. It's very clear that uh, the revision of science and the evidence base show that the routine application of a cervical corer by the first aid provider is not recommended. Not recommended because it can, uh, can occur uh, an, an, a, a brain edema if it's not well positioning. And it's very clear that now we have to talk with the emergency medical system service to see if it's really necessary to put a cervical cora before they arrive. In their awake and alert casualty with a suspected cervical spine injury, it's better. It's better to encourage the, the casualty to self-maintain their neck in a stable position and to not to move. In case of an unconscious person or uncooperative, the, 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 it's very clear that we can consider immobilization using a manual stabilization. Just a head squeeze or a trapezium squeeze, we, we, can, we can try to, to stabilize uh, the, 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 the head of the person. Now, talking about a head stroke. Head stroke is very often in uh, hot countries, but also in other countries. And uh, it's very clear it can occur because the sun is very hot, but also when you are, you, you are making an exercise, not a marathon, but uh, uh, just a sport, you can, you can have an, uh, a heat exhaustion or a heat stroke. It's very clear that uh, uh, you have to suspect that when the core temperature is more than 40 degrees Celsius. For that, we have to immediately, immediately give first aid. First, remove the casualty from the, the head sources. And if we are outside on the sun, we have to go inside somewhere where it is colder. Start a passive cooling with that in, the, in this place. And if possible, start very quickly an additional cooling using any technique immediately av available. For that, we, we can put the, the, the victim, the whole body, on the cold water immersion, very cold, 1 degree to 26 degrees. Ice pack can be used also when you, you are not able to put the victim in a bath. And you can use the ice packs in axilla, groin and neck. That's the place where uh, the, 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 the efficiency of the ice is the best. We can use ice sheets or towels, and also we, we can use misting or fanning. That's very interesting because it's sometimes easier to use that to decrease the temperature. Now, we can talk about the closed extremity joint injury. Compression back. Compression back, in fact, we have no evidence. No evidence to support this application for the, a single intervention. Probably for most of them, we have just to ask, the, the, to, to ask to the EMS what we have to do. And effectively, we have to ask to the, to the, to the casualty to not move. No more. It's very simple, but very efficient. And of course, after, we, you can have a medical advice, a medical consultation, or a radio in an hospital. Now, we can talk about presyncope. Presyncope is a vasovagal on an orthostatic presyncope. And it includes some signs very interesting to recognize. Lightheadedness, nausea, sweating. Sometimes black spots in front of the eyes, the victim say, oh, I don't see nothing. And sometimes uh, she or he, impending loss of consciousness. I begin by she because it's more often to young women. And it, it is very often for, for many reasons. Sometimes stress, sometimes pain, sometimes other reasons. But for that, 
we have to perform simple physical counterpressure maneuvers. And uh, that's true that lower body maneuvers are more effective than upper body maneuvers. That's the maneuvers. The lower body maneuvers, the two on the right side of the, of the slide, the leg tensing and the squatting are more efficient compared to the arm tensing. That's very important because very simple to apply. Better than uh, to, to raise the legs because it's not so easy to raise the legs when you are outside. So use the squatting or leg fencing and teach that to the person because it's, of course, it is interesting for, for the victim to do that by herself or himself. Now we are going to basic CPR and AD. Of course, it's including first aid in general, but it's a, it's a new topic. New topic, but not many news. news. First of all, we, we want to, to underline the interest of the Big Five. The Big Five is, uh, is described by the, the team of Professor Bottinger from Germany. And uh, he described very, very clearly that we have to increase the quality of five interventions. First, the, the lay resuscitation rate. That's very important to, to have a CPR done very quickly by the first responder. It's, it multiplicates by three. The impact on survival is the huge one that we have to make effort in all the countries. Second, the telephone CPR is of course very important and it's impacting a lot uh, also the survival rate. After, we have new technology. We will talk about that in a few minutes. But it still is the first responder system. It can be, uh, it can be uh, impact by 0 to 2, 2. Of course, at this time, we, we don't know how many because we have not enough, uh, enough evidences on that. But we hope that it will be more and more in the future. Of course, two other advanced, advanced life support are very important. The EMS team. Uh, that is double the, the impact on, on the survival and also the existence in some countries, but a lot of, uh, the, of the cardiac arrest centers that, of course, specialize uh, in cardiac arrest. What's the, what is the, the evolution of the CPR and AED situation? First, recognizing the cardiac arrest, the calling for help, the quality CPR, early and reliable detection of AEDs, locating the AEDs by the first, uh, and to have the first responders on site, and the knowledge gaps. Two things are news. This locating of AEDs very, very quickly, and to, to also uh, to have the first responder on site the, the quicker as possible, and also the knowledge gaps to, to prepare the 2025th guidelines and uh, evidence science. Here is the chain of survival. As you can see, all the, uh, all the links are not the same. The two first links are very important. First of all, the early recognition and the couple, the couple of the first responder and the, the person who, who receives the alert is very important. And this dispatcher, as to help the first responder if needed. And the, with that, we can, we can increase the survival. And it's the same for the early CPR. We, we very quickly, we can buy time. And that's very important because we, we, we have no time to, to begin the CPR immediately after the cardiac arrest. Of course, early defibrillation, Post-resuscitation care are very important, but the two first are the main, the main effort we have to do. The calling for help, it changes for, from, from, uh, from the past. Of course, now we have phone with, 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 with possibility to, to hear the voice of the, of, of the EMS directly by the loudspeaker and also to be, to be helped by video transmission. That's very important. Very important to increase the technique of the first responder. 
For that, we have a high performance system to follow. First of all, to follow on the pickup, the pick up the phone very quickly because we have to, to win time. After, we, we have to take very quickly also the administrative information. And after, the most important, the recognition of the cardiac arrest by phone. Because with that, we can start the telephone CPR. Telephone CPR can be done by a person who knows the, the CPR, who is, is not, don't know the, 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 the CPR. Because the, the dispatcher is able to help the person to begin the CPR on the center of the chest. Of course, we have to continue this telephone CPR to avoid no flow and to continue that until the help arrives. The recognition of cardiac arrest is very simple. You know that very well. The person does not respond and the person is not breathing normally. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we have two pitfalls. Pitfalls for the first aid provider, sometimes, but also for the dispatcher. First is the gasps. The gasps are common in cardiac arrest. And sometimes you can take that as a ventilation. It's a mistake. Of course, we have to be sure that the gasp is the first step for the death. And second, the seizures. The seizures are not uncommon in cardiac arrest. Of course, not too common of the gasp, but not uncommon. And with seizures, we can have sometimes the, the possibility for the lay people to think that, oh, it's a seizure. I put the, the person in, rec in recovery position. Unfortunately, she's not breathing and she's in cardiac arrest. And when the EMS arrived, she was in cardiac arrest and nothing was done. So be careful with the gasp and the seizures. Because that's when we, we know that the person is not responding and not breathing in our body, we have to put on the green point, the go. We have to go, we have to begin CPR. The chest compression, the quality. Quality CPR doesn't change since 2015. Effectively, we have to put the, uh, the, the, the push on the lower half of the sternum in the center of the chest, be simple. The depth must be five to six centimeters for the adults. Rate at 120 per minute to two compression per, per second. The arms must be stretched with complete relaxation of the chest. And of course, use a hard surface is important. And usually, simply, is the ground. After the concerning the ventilation, the ventilation is the gold standard. Effectively, if we can, we can have 30 compression for two ventilation. That's the gold standard. But, but unfortunately, if the rescuer cannot do that, especially during this COVID-19 period, or will not perform because he's, he doesn't know the person and he don't want to, to give ventilation, at this time, we have to, 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 to do hands-only CPR. Hands-only CPR is confirmed since 2015, uh, is, effic is efficiency. And we, we have, of course, to do that because it's important and it's better than nothing for sure. And of course, if COVID is here, we have to, to take some measure. First, what should I do in the presence of an unconscious person? First, I don't go near the victim mouth because the, the aerolization of the, the virus is very important. Only observe the regular movements of the chest and the abdomen to see if the victim is not breathing normally. After, what to do if someone at home or in the street is not breathing? It's not the same. First, beware of, of, of the aerolization, as I said previously. Call first the emergency medical service, but after, you have two possibilities. In the street, in the office, you don't know the person, you are not living in the same area of the person, you can, you can, you have a risk to have the, the COVID. And of course, you have to use hands-only CPR, chest compression only. That's all. 
And if possible, you can put a mask in the mouth of the victim. If you are at home, it's different. You are in the family environment. You are living on the same same virus environment. If COVID is at, at home, it's for everybody. And if the victim is a, ba a baby or a child, you have to consider mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation because it's important. We said that it's a gold standard. So please do mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation if you can. Now we can talk about the AED. AED is, a, is part of CPR, for sure. It's now the same thing. It's, it's really another gestures, including in, uh, in the CPR. The use of AED, very simple. Very simple and confirmed since 2015. It's to be, it, to be used without delay because, of course, it can save lives. And we have to use the, the AED when it is effective. And the most effective is at the beginning of the cardiac arrest because we, it's, the, it's the, the time where we have the, vent, the, 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 ventric, the, the fibrillation, the, the fibrillation of the heart and that's very important that this time at this time the AED is the most efficient do what it says because all the AED are, are speaking and you have you have just to follow what what it says and of course we know that the semi-automatic AEDs are perfectly safe with early and reliable detection so we can be confident with this material because if this material is agreed by high level as the American uh, uh, American uh, quality insurance as the Food and Drug Administration or the logo of e, uh, of European Community for Europe. The early detection is very clear that AED detects very quickly the heart rhythm, quick and uh, that's very efficient and he knows if a, 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 a fibrillation is here or not. If the rhythm is shockable, a message is given to the operator to deliver the electric shock and don't touch the victim. Additional messages uh, are tell to the, 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 the operator when to start and when to stop the CPR. And it's very good for, for the lay public. And last and not least, the reliable detection. The AEDs are very accurate in interpreting earth rhythm and they are able to know if we have a normal activity or it is an irregular one, and especially a ventricular fibrillation. And for that, it, it can be, the ID can be used by trained, but also by untrained general public, because it's so simple that it's better to use AD by a general public who is not untrained. That's not, nothing to, to do by these people. Now, talking about children, no many change. No many change because it's the same for as the adult. The frequency is two per minute, 120, the same, because the lay public has to have in mind the very simple things to do. The death, we have to compress the sternum at, uh, at least one third of the anterior post diameter. That's very important. We have to limit the interruption of CPR to avoid the no flow, allow the complete recoil of the chest and avoid excessive ventilation because sometimes the air can go directly to the stomach of the baby. So be careful on that. And of course, combine as soon as possible a ventilation with the chest compression because the origin of the cardiac arrest for the child and for babies is is must is is really the a ventilation problem more than a cardiac problem, and we need we need this ventilation very quickly. Of course, for the children, it's very simple also to use the defibrillators. It's uh, clear that we have to use a suitable device for the for child, but that if no suitable device is available, we can use an adult mode. It's not it's not. The, the best, but it's better than nothing. The position of the pads are very simple. Most of them are in anterior posterior. It's a, it's a, it's a reason of size of the thorax of the, of the baby or the infant. But 
Of course, it can be used as the adult in anterolateral. Concerning the feedback devices, since 2015, we talked about that, but the evaluation of science, evidence-based, will show that the use of real-time feedback is not recommended. Not recommended because we have not enough evidences um, unless they are part of a systematic approach and if we want to measure their efficiency. It's very clear that perhaps in the future we can say other things about that, but for the moment we have no evidence base concerning these feedback devices. The new technologies, four things. Smartphones, we talk about that with the video communication, possible with all the smartphones at this time, most of the smartphones. The, the artificial intelligence, it helps especially the, the, the dispatchers because it exists software that, uh, that, who, which can be able to analyze the, the, the appeal of the, of, the, of the first provider and also to have, to have guidelines to, uh, to give the diagnosis of cardiac arrest. This artificial intelligence by the computer win time to decide is it a cardiac arrest or not. And last but not least, the drones. The drones are very good to put, to, to give the ID near the first responder when, he, where he, when it he, he is in a remote area. And for sometimes in mountains, sometimes in in, in other parts of the of the country, you are very far of EMS, and the drone can help you to obtain a, an, an AED quickly. It will be the future for sure. These elements can help recognizing cardiac arrest, ensuring the high quality of the CPR, and obtaining resources, first responder and, and RADs. We have a challenge. We have a challenge when we, we want to have an IED. Effectively, early defibrillation increases the chance of survival. But sometimes, sometimes retrieving an IED is very difficult. In your, in your uh, place, sometimes in your town, you don't know where is the IED. And it's very important that the rescuer know where is it. For that, and since 2015, we have new partners, new uh, new apps who help us. First, apps for locating AEDs. These apps are able to locate the, the user and display the nearest AED, display the route of the location with the navigation app we have in all phones. Now, add new AEDs available uh, or update details of existing ones, assist in the creation of ID registers, and last and not least, report malfunctioning, unfortunately, if we need, or missing an ID. Terrible, but uh, realistic. And after, we, we have other apps. Now, the first responder location applications. That's very interesting because these apps are able to, to locate responders closest to the, the cardiac arrest, perhaps in, in 500 meters or one kilometer, no more, and inform the responder who are registered on, on the data uh, of, the, of the system, inform the responder of the location of an, a cardiac arrest, inform the responder of the nearest AED, and assist with that in the creation and updating the AED registers. We have some evidence uh, for that. Not enough, not enough, but we have quite interesting one. This one coming from Netherlands, and it, it shows that we win time for the first shock if we have this responder. And we, we win a lot of time. And probably the future will show that more often that, than today. In France, we have two excellent uh, apps who do that. The, the name are Save Life and Staying Alive. And effectively with that, we can have the first responder location. We, the approach of IED 
It's done by, again, the, the team of Professor Bottinger in, in Germany. And they describe an innovative approach of public access defibrillation. First, improving early detection of outside, outside uh, hospital cardiac arrest. Improving also the public awareness and willingness to use. Optimi optimizing the, the AED availability, reliability and usability with AED registration for sure. After we, we need AED signage and an international one. We have the green one normally is very well recognized by, by citizens. Mobile, mobile apps also for ID retrieval. I talked about that just a few, few minutes ago. And to have novel strategic delivery vectors as the drone, for example. And last and not least, we have to answer to this problem of the cardiac arrest who occurs at home. 70% of the cardiac arrest occurs at home. And for that, we need we need a, 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 a access defibrillation and home access defibrillation politic is very important. And it exists at this time, some AED who are effectively avoidable for home access defibrillation, deprivation, some more or than other. And it's important to evaluate this new system to take into account this terrible cardiac arrest who arrive in the family or with, with some neighbors. The knowledge gaps is the future, very important. We have some knowledge gaps. What could be the optimal placement of ID? What could be the optimal role of emergency medical dispatcher? It will be the purpose of the research in the, in the future, how to identify the nearest ID and how to immediately inform the callers using, of course, the apps. We have to, to continue to evaluate that and how to mobilize the citizenry skills. How can Hades be most effectively integrated into citizen response programs? It's a political interesting problem, and we have to develop these citizen response programs. So what could be the take-home message? As you see, the algorithm doesn't change. We begin with the unresponsive, with absence of abnormal breathing to the use of AED. And all the steps are the same compared to 2015. We have very few changes since 2015. But we have we, we underline during this presentation on the importance of the interaction between the, the basic CPI and the emergency dispatch. The importance of the new technologies to assist, to improve the efficiency, and to improve the training on CPR, and of course, to develop the knowledge gaps, because we need research to have now in better optimization of location, information of the dislocation to the citizen, and the mobilization of the citizen. For more information, you can go directly to the to the, the, the website, www.globalfirststatecenter.org, because you can find the, the, the higher first C guidelines 2020. In this guideline, we have many, many more subjects on first ed and education and evaluate by the science because the evidence base is important also in education. We will have a lot of subjects, more than the, the equal one and more than the ERC one because we try to do our, our best to revise more subjects, you will find environmental, trauma, medical, mental distress, you, tr you tr find a lot of, lot of subjects. And it's very clear that you will have also in these guidelines the, the evidence base on education. And that's very important. Very important for you to disseminate first aid all around the world. And for that, we evaluate the motivation to learn first aid what exists in terms of evidence base. Same for other subjects as the first aid education for children, the online learning for adults, the blended learning or the media learning, the, gamif the gamification, very, very useful for young people because the gamification is a very good thing 
to disseminate to disseminate first net first net knowledge and first net resuscitation for child for children. The peer learning also very interesting because peer learning it's probably better when you are teached by a person who looks like you. It's very clear, young to young, elderly to elderly. It's very interesting because you know that is no your problem. The video learning, the feedback devices, we, and we have to, to see if it's efficient because for the moment we, we have not enough uh, evidence. And last and not least, the refresh and retrain. That's very important because we, we must know what could be the period between two training that we know that we are not able to have in mind all the techniques, especially the lay public, because he's not using, of course, first aid and, and resuscitation each, each month or each year. And we have to refresh and retrain and to use the best period and to use the best content and the best, the best method. For that, explore the guidelines on the, on the website. You will find many, many other things. And I want to thank you very much for your attention.